Hey, everybody, and welcome to Healthy Living. My guest today is Dr. Nathan Gershfeld. After having a life-changing experience, Nathan Gershfeld, D.C., changed careers from an electrical engineer to being a chiropractor. He followed this internship under Dr. Helen Goldhammer at the True North Health Center in Santa Rosa, California, from 2011 to 2014. And since then, he has maintained a private practice in Orange County that includes supervision of water-only fasting. And this summer, he is opening an inpatient fasting center. And if you'd like more information on that, please go to fastingescape.com. And I'll type that on the screen in a moment. The screen, not the screen. <laughs> he currently serves on the board of the True North Health Foundation. And one of my favorite things about him is that he is both the creator and the producer of my very favorite podcast called Beat Your Dreams, starring Dr. Doug Lyle. So please welcome Dr. Doug. Uh, Chef AJ, it's a pleasure to be here. I'm thrilled. I've, I've right. seen a lot of your webinars. It's just it's just a bucket list item to have, to be here and to have everybody. So thank well, you so thank much you for so much me. for being here, Dr. Gershfeld. It's been far too long since I have been wanting to interview. But let's start with the life experience. Tell us about that. Oh gosh, so so I'm 33 years old, and when I was 20 years old, uh, this is my senior year uh, of my electrical engineering degree. Uh, what happened was my mom, who, you know, great mother, always been concerned about, you know, any health problems that were coming up. She noticed a lump in my neck and being the, you know, stubborn son that I was, I kind of ignored her for, you know, a good six months to a year. And it turns out that the lump in my neck got bigger and bigger. So well, finally, I decided to finally listen to my mom. And I went to the doctor and the doctor told me that I had a couple of things wrong. One is I had a tumor growing on my thyroid. Two was that uh, he thought that it may be autoimmune, like Hashimoto's thyroiditis. And three, that I had hypothyroidism. So uh, the, the good news was that I was really stubborn and I didn't want to get, you know, some of the things that he was recommending, uh, which I'm not going to say here because now I realize I probably should have done <laughs> what he said, uh, because if it would have been cancer, then I would have been in a lot of trouble if I didn't listen to him. But what I did do was my grandmother Growing up, my grandmother's a chiropractor. She's always been interested in health and healthful living and the natural hygienic approach. And she had always told us that you look at your diet, you look at your sleep, you look at your exercise, you look at your mental, mental, you know, emotional health, and that's where you start when it comes to health. So I went off my own little journey where I was searching for all kinds of things. I mean, every you know, pill, potion, powder, supplement, you know, cleanse, everything that was there when I was trying it, I tried it. So I bought all kinds of, you know, mushroom supplements. I, I did all these little, you know, uh, cleanses and all this rest of stuff. And three months later, my tumor had doubled in size. So here we go. I'm not, I don't really know what to do, but I didn't really want to listen to the doctor. So I started reading more and more and more. And I somehow, my grandma told me that I should check out some crazy water clinic in San Francisco. And I looked up True North, found it there, read some of the articles, I read all the articles and it made a lot of sense to me. Called up Dr. Goldhammer, asked him about what was going on. And he, he told me, he said, you, you got to do a water fast and see what happens. So I went up to True North Health Center. I was planning to do a 30 day water fast, but I didn't last that long. I think I broke it. I only lasted five days. Uh, well, actually I only lasted four and a half days because I snuck into the kitchen the, the last, the, the fourth night and tried to get an apple because I was feeling so <laughs> miserable that I thought if I just ate an apple, I might feel a little bit better. But uh, so what ended up happening then was just a life transforming experience, which was that all this struggle that I had uh, going from 20 meals of fast food, essentially a week to where now at True North, I was eating healthy. And the, the, I had struggled for those three months beforehand to eat healthy because because of the pleasure trap now I know is that the food was really addictive and I had a really tough time eating the healthy foods and not craving and not eating the, the chips and the cakes and the cookies. And even when I tried, you know, the, the vegan and raw food, there was a lot of raw food and vegan junk food as well. So what happened was after True North, I was able to actually stick on eating steamed starchy vegetables and steamed vegetables and whole grains and beans and all the rest of the stuff that, that you know, we had, we had at True North. And I did a follow up for my for my scan. It turned out that I had reversed my Hashimoto's thyroiditis through my blood test. So I didn't have the antibodies. The antibodies were lowered. 
I reversed my hypothyroidism and then uh, my tumor had shrunk by about 75%. So it was like an eye-opening experience. It was like I was onto something. And so coming from an engineering background, so at, by the way, at this point I had, I had already graduated from engineering and I was kind of like thinking, what am I supposed to do with my health? Because that was my big pressing concern. I, I, all my friends were getting jobs and trying to apply to different places. And I was applying to different places, but like I was constantly distracted uh, by, by my health because in my mind, I didn't have any medical knowledge at all. I thought that if I have a tumor, I'm going to be dead. And the doctor, because I didn't listen to him, he had sent me a letter to follow my advice. You might be, you know, you might have some pretty significant consequences. So I was kind of lost and True North Press basically brought me back to center. So I started thinking, well, you know, now I realize what I was thinking of how to, how to earn Stone Age money, as you, you said before, Chef AJ, and as Dr. <laughs> Lila said on the podcast. Uh, but at that point, what I was thinking was, hey, you know, I like engineering, but I really like this health stuff a lot more. So I started thinking and thinking and thinking. I had been doing martial arts, uh, Chinese martial arts at the time for a while. And the uh, some of the cultural things in the martial arts school were really appealing to me. So what I decided was I'm going to try to do acupuncture. And I'll do I'll go to acupuncture school. And while I'm getting my prereqs, by the way, uh, uh, in chiro chiropractic school, I needed uh, anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, organic chemistry before I could start the program. But in engineering, I didn't take any of those classes. I was taking the physics, the calculus, the math, all those things. So what I decided was I'll take those uh, prereqs and while I'm taking those, because acupuncture didn't require those prereqs, I'll just take acupuncture classes and see what I can find from there. My thinking was fasting is a miserable and intense experience, as anyone who's called Dr. Goldham about fasting will hear from him. And I thought, well, if I did acupuncture, then I could just uh, take away some of the symptoms of fasting. So I went to acupuncture school while I was doing the prereqs. It was fun. It was interesting. But there was a lot of conflicting information. I couldn't really get a, a straight idea as to what exactly was happening. And what ended up happening was I, I kept reading more and more about the pleasure trap and about True North Health Center and about the natural hygienic approach. And it started to make more and more sense to me to the point where nothing else made sense to me except for that. So uh, two years in, I started the chiropractic school again. And what was cool is uh, I emailed Dr. Goldhammer. I told him that I had been there in fast and I was really wanting to come in and intern before I started chiropractic school. And a little bit of hem and hawing, and I actually convinced him to let me come in. And I didn't do anything clinical because I didn't have any clinical knowledge, but I just did whatever I could to help the interns and the other doctors. And at the end of those three weeks uh, before I started chiropractic school, I saw people get better and I saw people go through changes with their health that I'd never heard of before. And that everybody that I've had, I've talked to from the, uh, from my school, from the clinical perspective said it was impossible. People who had high blood pressure reversed their high blood pressure. People who had uh, lupus, I would, I would fall, you know, see them go through a 12 day fast and then, and then refeed and their lupus symptoms decreased. And not only that, their, their blood tests showed that they improved as well. So it was really interesting to me because it removed some of the subjectivity from it. So it wasn't that people were having some placebo effect. It's like, oh no, their, their blood tests actually show that they're getting better or their weight actually showed that they're getting better. So as an engineer, it was really appealing to me that that it wasn't just how charismatic someone could be and just how, how, how much someone can like you and then they'll just say they're better, they actually are better. Uh, that was incredibly appealing to me. So I, I was lucky enough to have a really good relationship with Dr. Goldhammer and so we kind of agreed that that during my breaks at chiropractic school, I would just come up during my break you know, one week, two weeks at a time and just intern there and just learn as much as I could. And so that's that was just a huge journey because I would just get a lot of clinical experience just coming in and, and following Dr. Linsner around, uh, sitting with Dr. Sultana, Dr. Clapper, uh, some of the interns. I mean, we had Dr. Goldhammer, you know, has you know, the best and brightest medical doctors come to Dr. Goldhammer's clinic to learn about how to get people well. And this was this was just really, really lucky for me that I just happened to come there, you know, when this was happening. So, uh, and they had just gone into the new facility. So, you know, I did that during school, got a lot of good experience. And then my last semester of school, they allow you to take certain credits at a different doctor's office. So you can kind of start to do what you want to do in your practice. And they allowed me to come up to True North and do my final semester at True North. And that's what I did as I completed my, my full on internship. And when I was finished, Dr. Goldhammer asked me to join the staff. And so that was just, it was probably one of the best days of my life is when, when all this work I, I, I put into this and Dr. Goldhammer was just thrilled to have me there. So that was, 
it was a really emotional moment. I remember, uh, uh, you know, get my little name tag and it went, the, uh, the, uh, one of the secretaries changed it from Nathan intern to like Dr. Gershfeld. And it was just like, it was pretty cool. You know, it was, it was, it was fun to see and be part of that, part of that uh, process. And the, daily, uh, the weekly rounds were cool. And so, so yeah, so I was on, uh, on staff there for a couple of years. Uh, I always wanted to come down to Southern California because I love the weather. The family's down here. It's called, it's always familiar to me. And, and Santa Rosa was a great city. It just, it just wasn't it for me. So a couple of years ago, uh, I made the move down here to Southern California and always had an idea. Dr. Goldhammer and I have always talked, you know, that there, you know, we can't just have one fasting clinic. We can't have just one fasting center. So, uh, you know, starting this summer, the just culmination of all these efforts is me starting uh, a small, small little eight inpatient facility for people to be able to fast. And so that's, that's my story with how I, that's my life changing experience. So and here I am with you, Chef AJ, that, you know, well, we met at Trinidad. That's a great story. And people are commenting that it's so great that you recovered your health. So it's amazing how many stories of healing take place. I could probably just do a whole show of that, but what's important is that you actually changed your career after so many years of studying to be an electrical engineer. I know that Dr. Lindsner, who you met, he came to True North as an accountant. He was so impressed by what he saw. He actually later in life went to chiropractic school to work there. So, yeah. so, so are you hypo, Are you cured from your hypothyroidism now? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I do blood tests to follow up uh, about every year. Sometimes I, I procrastinate. I do it every year and a half or two years. And ever since that fast, uh, my my antibody count has been in the normal range, uh, whereas before it was in the, it was out of range. And then my my thyroid, my TSH, my TF4, T3, all within normal range. Uh, my tumor's still there. I I, ha I never did a long enough fast to get rid of it, but uh, but it decreased to about 20% of its original size, and it's kind of stayed that way. I. I, I've been on the True North program, you know, as best as I can, but I'm human, you know, I, I, I haven't I haven't completely stayed on it 100%, and I always wanted to do a longer fast, and I think I'll be able to do one, you know, sometime in the future, but right now, I, I got well enough, and I felt better enough where I just figured, you know, let me move on with life, and if I've got it two weeks or three weeks to spare, uh, then I'll do it, so. Terrific. So overall, I, I think it's a win. Talk a little bit about your grandparents. How the heck did they know back then to become a natural hygienist? Oh, this is cool. So my grandmother, uh, my grandma and grandpa, they came from Russia, uh, like old Soviet Russia. And so, you know, the kind of personality it takes to escape Russia, where the Russian dictatorship was just, they, they are not, you know, they're, they're not going to bend over backwards when something hits them. So what happened was, uh, my grandma was a high school chemistry teacher in the LA Unified School District, and she had a bunch of health problems uh, constantly, low back pain. Uh, she was always overweight. And uh, one of her classmates, oh, what happened was she, she went to some chiropractor who adjusted her and it got rid of her sciatica. And so she got such a good result from that that she's like, you know, I like chemistry, but let me go into chiropractic school. She was 60 years old. She went to chiropractic school when she was 60 years old. And in chiropractic school, one of her classmates, every day he was coming in. But by the way, everybody in, in when I was going to chiropractic school, there wasn't a lot of, you know, the, the people who ate healthy was few and far between. Uh, but mostly the same thing as anywhere else. Pizza, fries, chicken wings, you know, et cetera. Uh, so and the same thing was true when she was going to school in the 90s. Uh, so one of her classmates Every to come in, she would tell me she he had this like uh, lunch pail and it had fruits, vegetables, bananas, baked potatoes, or you know something something close to that. And every day people would make fun of him, and she would kind of curiously look and say, "Well, what's going on?" He'd explain to her, "Oh, you know, health comes from healthful living." So she had this idea she, from him, and she kept reading more and more and more about it. A couple of her mentors were all about you know back then a lot of chiropractors were into health and healthful living. And she just, she read, uh, I think it was Arnold Eretz, Mucus, Mucusless Diet. Uh, that was like her, her favorite book. She got into raw food cooking. I mean, this was before the, the uh, SOS free and the plant-based, all the, all those terms. And this was before China study. But somehow she, she kind of made the connection that food has a lot to do with health. And a lot of these old books uh, by Tilden, by, uh, you know, the natural hygienists, it just made sense to her. So she kind of imparted that to us. I remember growing up, 
uh, me and my sisters would be scared every time she came over to our house because she would be looking through our refrigerator, just you know, making sure that we didn't have any junk food there. And my, my parents, once in a while, they get a little conflict, but they all knew she was she, she had good intentions, but it was always really fun. Uh, and so when I when I started to, to get interested in it, uh, I just I knew exactly where to go and just to ask her. And she kind of guided me throughout the way. And then I, I kind of took my own path from there. That is so cool. Are your grandparents are still alive? Yes. Uh, my grandma just turned 83, I think, or 84 in February. And my grandfather just turned 87. Wow. Do they live down here? They live in, They live down here, right down here. I see him. I see him probably once, twice a week. Oh, my God. So. I would love to meet them. Maybe I can interview them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, my grandmother has a lot to say about health, and it's a lot of fun. So I'll right. be sure to put you guys in touch. They sound, they sound terrific. Where did you go to chiropractic school? There is a school in Southern California called Southern California University of Health Sciences. And under that umbrella is well, they have like a massage and a physician's assistant program. And then they have the chiropractic school, which is uh, Los Angeles College of Chiropractic. Cool. Because I used to do culinary demos at the one on Vermont. That wasn't the one you, you went to. Oh, you know, you're probably thinking of the uh, Cleveland College of Chiropractic. Right. Yeah, there was two. So Cleveland College, I think they shut down in my last year of chiropractic school. Right. And so all our students came to LACC. Nice. Well, the reason I mentioned that is because you were talking about how very few chiropractors actually eat healthfully. And when I used to do these demos, I would drive up to the school and all the chiropractors were outside like smoking and having, you know, their Coke and, and stuff. And it's, it's yeah. different, like if you're a true North chiropractor. But could you talk a little bit about what a chiropractor is, Dr. Gershaw? Because I personally think that I think of them very highly. But, you know, there's some people that think you're not a real doctor and that it's well, talk a little bit about what it is you do because you do help people so much. You know, we have a little friend, Janita, who was in so much pain and, and you you healed her. So what is a chiropractor and why do you think some people are so afraid of going to a chiropractor? Well, first off, uh, my mom always wanted me to be a doctor. And so I figured I'd, I'd get about halfway there. And that's why I became a <laughs> Uh, no, but I'm just kidding. I, I, basically, a chiropractor. So, if we look at the the regulations, anybody that the what distinguishes somebody who's a doctor and somebody who's not a doctor is the duty to diagnose somebody. So, if you go to somebody and they're they're just kind of treating you no matter what you have, and they're treating you the same, then they're not really allowed to order tests to diagnose you. They're not allowed to order blood work. They're not allowed to order imaging, MRIs. They're not allowed to really do that stuff because they're, they're bound by a different scope of practice. So anytime you hear the word doctor, that's what that means. Um, but in terms of chiropractic, chiro comes from the word hand and practic comes from doing. So chiropractic just means done by hand. And so the question is, what are we doing by hand? And, and you know, you pick 200 different chiropractors and you line them up in a room and you ask them what they do. You're probably going to get 200 different answers uh, in terms of how specific they are. But at the heart of this is what chiropractors do is they're evaluating the spine. They're evaluating the nervous system. They're evaluating the, the neuromusculoskeletal system. And they're adjusting bones as necessary so that the body can have the best ability to heal itself. Um, whenever you have lack of motion, whenever you have misalignments in bones in different ways, then you, you run into problems, you run into inflammation, you run into different issues that can result in symptoms. Now, uh, I get patients in here and they say that the chiropractor healed them or I healed them. I would disagree. I don't think that the doctor heals the person. I think that the doctor's job is to set up the right condition so the body can heal itself. Uh, and so whether that means getting people on a health-promoting SOS-free diet or whether it means adjusting a particular bone so that there's less inflammation, there's more motion, I think the result is the same. Most of patients are coming to a chiropractor or a therapist or, you know, anybody as for a result of their lifestyle. Uh, you know, I, I have a lot of patients who do a, a lot better with their treatments when they, when they are able to s sustain a health-promoting diet. Because let's face it, if you're carrying around 50 pounds of weight every day, there's no question that the back pain is going to be the overarching problem. And no matter what adjustments I do to whatever parts of your neck or back or wherever, uh, that's always going to be there. And so what I try to do respectfully and what I try to do very gently is explain that my job, at least in my practice, is to get to the cause of the problem. If we don't get to the cause of the problem, then no matter what we do, the problem is going to keep coming back. It's really similar if you cut your hand. You, you know your body's going to heal itself. We know this to be true. 
Uh, nothing in modern medicine has discovered a way to heal your body faster than it heals itself. It's just the way it is. And so if you go to the ER, if it's a really serious cut, what they're going to do is they're going to sti- they're going to stitch it up. They're going to clean, you know, they clean it up, stitch it up, and they're going to let it rest. They didn't actually heal that cut. They just set up the right conditions. Okay. So if they're setting up those right conditions and you go home, you rub your hand on sandpaper or you, you do something to interfere with that, no matter how many times you go back to the ER, it's going to, it's going to keep coming back and keep coming back and keep coming back. And they're just going to be doing the same thing over and over and over again. So this is the, this is conceptually what the, the problem is in most of healthcare is that if we don't know the cause of the problem, we start intervening, then we're going to run into problem problems. Uh, and so as a chiropractor, what I try to do is I try to adjust people where they need to feel their pain, or where they have pain and where they need to feel relief. Uh, and so in, in your friend's case, uh, that, you know, the lifestyle was already there. So this was like a really big excitement for me because people who eat really healthy and live well, and, you know, they, they have a health money lifestyle in general, they tend to do a lot better than people who don't. And it's a lot more exciting for me. So this is this is essentially what what the thing is with chiropractic is. I think that uh, in all forms of healthcare, if people were to adopt a good, healthy diet, get appropriate sleep, get enough sunshine, laughter, appropriate response to stress, and a loving social circle, they probably would do a lot better in all measurements and all, a lot of markers. So, do you actually have time to talk to each patient about diet and lifestyle? I try. So I, I try to rule out. <laughs> maybe maybe I shouldn't say this publicly, but I try to. I try to gently and respectfully talk about lifestyle, but I also respect that some people are just not there and they're not really interested in talking about lifestyle. They're not, they're not there yet. Um, I've had a couple of people, you know, in the beginning of my practice, I would talk, try to talk to everybody. I was a little bit evangelical about it because I thought from my perspective, I want to hear the cause of the problem. But I started to realize that from their perspective, all they want to do is get rid of their pain and go on with their day and then focus on it later. So what I did was in my intake forms, I now have a little section on there that says, you know, how interested they are in their diet and lifestyle. And if they check a couple of boxes that signal to me that they're not really interested, then I don't even mention it because it's they're just going to get annoyed. They're going to get irritated. I've had patients get irritated at me saying, hey, I just want to come in here and get adjusted and get cracked, essentially. Uh, and here you are trying to tell me how to solve my problems. It's the uh, the age old, you know, I want to go to nutritionist, but I didn't run, realize I'd have to eat differently. Uh, it's, it's the whole it's the whole issue. So, but yeah, with people who are telling me that, hey, I've got a big problem, I really want to solve it. Uh, then I tell them, okay, here's a couple of ways. One is you can use me as mechanical aspirin. Okay, that's going to help. Number two is if you want to get the the cause of the problem, this is how we're going to do it. And so. I try to do that to, to patients who are interested, but uh, I try not to waste their time if they're not either. Right. Well, that's great. Where is your clinic located? If somebody, because we do have people watching from Southern California, do you have a website for your clinic right now? Sure. I'm in Fullerton, California, right, right, uh, right near downtown Fullerton. It's about 15 minutes away from Disneyland. And the website is www.ocuppercervical.com. I'm going to type that into the box here. Uh, okay. So, and, and I focus on head and neck related injuries. Uh, so things like post concussions, vertigo, dizziness, uh, neck pain, pinched nerves, you know, people who feel like they have a pinched nerve. And the, the cool thing is that people who don't like their neck twisted or cracked, um, I don't do that. So I focus on gentle adjustments. Nice. Uh, for, for that. So let me type that in. Yeah, here. you can type it in the back chat and then I will type it in for the people. Okay. Cause right now it just says your name. So, the next question I have to ask is how did you have the brilliant idea to give this wonderful platform to our mutual friend, Dr. Lyle? First of all, if you're not familiar with the Beat Your Genes podcast, I believe there's at least 112 episodes now. It airs live every Wednesday at 8.30 Pacific time for an hour. You can also listen on iTunes. And you could even call in the show and ask Dr. Lyle a question personally. So how did you get the great idea? How did you convince Dr. Lyle to do it? And uh, how do you like being a producer? Uh, this is this is like, you know, I'm in heaven every week. Um, I, I joke around and say I was too cheap to actually pay Dr. Lyle for an hour session. So instead I started the show. Uh, and so what, what happened was I, I was at True North. And anyone who's been at True North knows that the interns are really busy all the time. And so um, every once in a while, I, I would pop in and see Dr. Lyle uh, speak. Oh, and by the way, 
when I first got there as a patient, I was on like my third or fourth day of fasting. I was laying on the little recliner in the living room of the True North house back, back in the old uh, Oval House. And oh, you know what? I misspelled, I misspelled that link. One second. It's Did I the type the link incorrectly? R B I C A L. Oh, okay. That might be me. Oh, I, okay. I'll fix it. Sorry okay. about that. AJ so, cannot so, spell. That's all right. Uh, so when I was at True North as a patient, I was on my third or fourth day of fasting and I was incredibly weak and tired and sleepy. Uh, but I made it out to the living room to hear Dr. Lyle talk. And he was talking about status and embarrassment, all the different emotions that we feel uh, when we're around other people. And I remember laying there hearing this and it was like so interesting to me, but I was like so sleepy from fasting that my eyes were barely like barely staying open. And I was like, God, I hope he doesn't think I'm being disrespectful. Like I really want to hear this, but I ended up falling asleep and he left and no problem. Next time I see him was at True North when I was an intern. So I sat in on his lecture. A lot of it made a lot of sense. I mean, it was stuff that I, you know, he has an amazing way of putting into words what what, what what I've been feeling for years, you know, for my whole life. And this was like really cool to see. So I tried to make it out to his lectures every week uh, and hear more and more about this. Uh, one of my good friends was was one of his patients. So she would constantly talk to me uh, about stuff that, that he would talk about. And I think I gave it a break for about a year because it was a little bit disturbing, a little unsettling to me. And I was just kind of busy with other things but I was still at True North and then something clicked and I just was, you know, insatiable. I wanted to hear everything he had to say. So I was going to every one of his lectures, trying to like push, you know, fight through the crowds at the end of his lectures to, to ask him a question. And uh, when I left True North, um, it just kept ruminating in my head, ruminating in my head. And then I had had a major conflict uh, here at my office that I needed his, his help with. And, uh, and so I called Dr. Goldhammer and emailed Dr. Lyle and I spoke with Dr. Lyle. He helped me through it. And it was like, it was really eye opening how he approached the problem. It was, it was like completely opposite than what I thought. So uh, about six months later, eight months later, um, I was thinking, you know, I want to do a little podcast. And I, I was talking with another friend about doing a podcast where we have like guests like you, Chef AJ, talk about nutrition, talk about, you know, how to eat healthy. We could talk about, you know, invite Dr. Goldhammer, Dr. McDougall, uh, Dr. Lyle. Um, so I called Dr. Lyle just to see what he thought. And he said, yeah, you know, I've been thinking of, you know, th this is a really interesting idea. I've been thinking about doing something like this. Uh, and I thought, you know, why don't we just do it together and uh, we'll just have, we'll just talk about life. And so we did our first show about almost two years, a little more than two years ago. And it's been no looking back, you know, it, it's been a lot of fun. I, I just, I'm thrilled. I feel incredibly lucky uh, that Dr. Lyle has, you know, has continued to come on week after week and we, we, we have a pretty big audience and I'm really, really happy that we have, that, that we've been doing it. It's amazing because and nobody even told me about it. Like I had, I you didn't tell me about it. He didn't tell me about it. I don't know how I even stumbled about it. And then I think at the time you had maybe sixty episodes, and then I had to listen to all of them, like like you know, in four days. But there's even a Facebook page now for fans of the Beat Your Genes podcast, and people are interested in discussing these principles of evolutionary psychology. I, I love the show. Do you ever have a real real crackpot calling? You ever had to deal with them just real crazy people? You know, we've had a couple of uh, that. We had one obvious prank caller in the beginning of the show, and then we had like two or three who called. I think so. So the first one, uh, we I think this was one of our very first callers because uh, I got really excited. Like I, when I get excited, I get this little adrenaline rush, and then like you know I start jittering and, and I start like talking really really fast. And so we're we're on the show. Dr. Lyle is going on one of his longer explanations. And the caller, so on my end, I can see when the caller pops up in their phone number. And I, I see them call up and I'm like, oh, cool, we got our first caller. Because when we had begun, started the show, we talked that, you know, maybe eventually we can have certain shows where we just have call, live callers call in, talk about the problems, and then next caller talk about the problems. Kind of similar to some of these live doctors, like a Dr. Laura type of show. Uh, so this first caller calls, I put them on, they start describing their problem to, to us. And then they, they hit us with the punchline, which is I edited it out because it was really gross. Uh, and so and uh, and I cut off and me and Dr. Lyle had a quick laugh about it. And uh, and, and then I thought, damn it. You know, afterwards, I talked to Dr. Lyle. I said, damn it. I, I, that was our first caller. I, I thought I thought we were going to get our first caller, you know. Uh, 
And then a couple of other callers, one crackpot, he called, I think he was drunk or high, and I think I left it in there. Um, I can't remember, but it was earlier in the show, he called and he he challenged Dr. Lyle to some judo, you know, judo contest or martial arts. He said he could kick Dr. Lyle's ass or something like that. I think he was drunk though. So, uh, but that was, you know, we're gonna get some crazies there anyway. We, we got a pretty big audience, but uh, yeah. Hey, it's been um, fun. Somebody asked, Sharon asked if it's on YouTube, but they can't listen to the episodes on YouTube, correct? No, you want it to, to listen to it, you go a couple of ways. If you have a, a smartphone, you can just go to your podcasts app, if it's an iPhone, and just type in Beat Your Jeans. And you, it's it's just called Beat Your Jeans, and you can download it and subscribe. Um, if you don't have an iPhone and you have like an Android, then you can go to Google Play or any podcast type of app. Um, and if you want to listen to it from your browser, you can go to blogtalkradio.com slash beat your jeans. Uh, and then you can listen to it live from that from that website. Uh, you can also listen, go to our website, which is I'm probably given, you know, too, too many websites here, but <clears throat> it's uh, beatyourjeans.org. And that's just our homepage for the website. You can listen to episodes from there or read about the podcast. There's a reading list. Uh, there's there's all the little episodes there and things like that. So. Nice. Like, do you have metrics? Like, like, are there certain episodes that, pe- that people seem to listen to more than others? Yeah, the, the most popular episode is number one, but I think it's because uh, that's the one that everybody starts at. So um, oh. let me pull it up here. But yeah, there's the, the ones that are about dating tend to be the ones that are most popular. Uh, every episode has differences in terms of like how many guys listen to it versus how many girls, the age group. It's generally, we have more girl, like more women listen to it, but I think it's, but it's pretty close. It's like 55, 45. Uh, and then once in a while it skews like 70, 30. I think the one uh, where it was this, uh, what do uh, the, it's a first dates, you know what I mean? Like how, how to, how to do a first date for a guy that was really interesting um, for, for a lot of men. But, uh, but yeah, we have a pretty, pretty, you know, balanced audience for all these, but dating, dating questions, I think, and sex questions tend to be really popular episodes. Yeah. Well, I love the show. Thank you for creating it. I learned so much. You have long when you compare yourself like to Dr. Goldhammer, but do you you've had a great story of healing yourself? But is there a story maybe from a patient that's a of profound healing? Because I think our audience really likes to hear stories. Like you know, there, there's so many that that uh, that I've seen at True North and in my practice, but a, a couple of them just come to mind. The, this was when I was an intern. Uh, and so and, and when I was an intern at True North, it wasn't a lot of, you know, every intern at True North is, you know, they've gone to school. They've done this was me coming in just to volunteer at True North before I even went to school. And so I was there for three weeks just kind of looking at everything, listening to everything and just doing the best that I could to stay out of the way of the doctors and just do whatever they wanted. But what was really cool was. There was one one uh, one gentleman there, and he had come in uh, because his prostate, uh, his PSA count was high, and he his doctor had told him that he might have to do surgery on his prostate, and uh, he was scared to death, and he was very nervous because you know he had a life, he had kids, he had a wife, uh, he he just did not want to do any surgery. He was nervous that that he's going to have his you know genitalia cut into, so. He did a fast. He was really skeptical, but he just kind of put his trust into Dr. Goldhammer. He did a fast. And then a week later, uh, they, they redid his PSA test and his PSA test uh, dropped to half of what it was and it was back to normal. And he sent, had sent it to his doctor and his doctor said, hey, I don't know what you did, but you know, you're fine now. And I remember him coming out and I just happened to be the first intern, you know, the first person that he saw after he got these results. And he ran up to me and he hugged me and he's like, oh, my God, I'm so happy. This is so great. Thank you guys so much. And that, that really stuck with me. You know, this, this is a guy who was scared to death and he had such a good result. Another lady that I saw, um, <clears throat> she, uh, she, she had had lupus and she had had such bad lupus that her doctors had put her on, I think it was prednisone, methotrexate all kinds of like nasty medications and she was having kidney problems because of these medications and because of her lupus and she had stayed there for for three weeks so i had only seen her her final two weeks so she had the one more week of fasting then she was like refeeding for another week or so Uh, and she had just gotten her blood test back after she finished refeeding just to recheck and her numbers were starting to come down and i remember like coming up to her just because she she's she was a little teary-eyed at the, the outside of true north at the outside of the dining room 
there was like a, they have like a, you know, little benches with the umbrellas. And she was sitting there with her blood test, like just completely silent. She was, she was not as animated as the other guys. She was just very quiet, very silent. And she had tears coming out of her eyes. And I came up to her and I said, are, are you okay? Everything okay? Can I get you something? And she said, I just can't believe it. Like I've been trying to fight this like lupus for, for years. I couldn't remember how long, but it was, it was a long time. And she said, every doctor I've been to couldn't help me. And they told me that I'm going to live with this for the rest of my life. And finally, I don't have pain in my arms and, and my fingers. And my blood tests show that I'm actually getting better. Like she basically saying, thank God that I found True North. Those are the kind of things that, you know, you, you, you know, you can't buy, you know, you, you can't, you can't, uh, you, I, don't, I don't even know how to describe it. This was like kept cementing in my mind that this, this is the kind of thing that I want to do for my life. Uh, in my practice, I've seen, I've seen a lot of really interesting cases. Some of them have to do with fasting and, uh, and food. Uh, they, they aren't quite as significant because I believe that people who are coming to True North are highly motivated. People are coming to a chiropractor. They're probably going to be going to, to a lot of different places for their really serious conditions. And so the kind of successes I've had in my practice with regards to food are things like people lowering their blood pressure, losing weight, you know, all the normal stuff that, that we kind of come to expect with this diet. But the really cool things that I've seen with regards to chiropractic, uh, so a couple of them. One is I have a, there's a testimonial on the fastingescape.com uh, website of, of a couple of patients who did well with whatever I do with chiropractic, but they didn't do that well. Uh, they wanted to do better. So we had them do a fast and they just incredible, incredible results. Uh, I had one lady who came in and she had gotten a huge car accident. She was a postal worker. So she was driving the postal trucks and a drunk driver had wrecked into her, flipped over both, both trucks. And she had woken up uh, after 30 minutes of being unconscious with a headache, migraines, vertigo, and dizziness. And this continued for three years. Uh, on the two-year mark, the doctor told her that she that he believed she was faking it and that he's taking her off disability, so she should go back to work. But she couldn't drive, so she would stumble around and drop off the mail at different offices because she was too dizzy to do anything else. She comes to my office. We I look at her neck and evaluate her neck, and within about uh, two months, she was 100% back to normal. Uh, this was really cool. Uh, it was really cool to see that your body can heal itself if given the right conditions of, of many, many, many things. Uh, this was really cool. So um, she actually, funny enough to say, she didn't change her diet at all. I tried to get her to change her diet a lot, but, uh, but it turns out uh, she did really well just with the correct adjustments. Uh, and of course, this is what I see when people have trauma, when they go into car accidents, concussions like that. Uh, but a lot of patients I've seen have been, it's just been really cool uh, results. It's really cool that, that people choose to give me the credit when it's actually their body that gets the credit <laughs> when their body body's the one that does the work, you know, but, but, uh, but, you know, good healthcare providers are supposed to just set up the right conditions. Dr. Goldhammer would say that the reason he chose this job is because uh, the body does all the healing and take all the credit. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. It's, it's good for him. Yeah. Okay. It's so really cool though. I mean, where else? Yeah. That's opening this summer. Will there be other doctors there or chefs or Dr. Lyles? Tell us about it. So the, the fasting is a way for people who have been struggling and trying to eat healthy or people who are just kind of getting into this and need to fast. It's a way for them to come in and live in a little like a little it's, it's going to be a large house with a couple of rooms for people to come in. And it's going to be a mini type of true north. And we're going to have some education, but mostly it's about rest and relaxation, just letting people escape the pleasure trap. Uh, uh, Dr. Lyle will be there as a guest lecturer once in a while to come and talk to people. Uh, Chef AJ, I, I would love to have you there as well. Come once in a while. I know we've talked a little bit about this. Uh, we're going to have a little, there's a couple other people doing cooking demos. Uh, we're going to have, I'm going to have a, little, a lady who comes in and does maybe yoga teacher or, or some little meditation body use. Uh, but the main point of it is going to be for people to come in and rest and be able to escape their environment. Uh, I feel, and I've seen clinically that, there's a lot of people who are putting a lot of effort into getting healthy, and this is not easy. Uh, it's not easy. Uh, I've seen people at True North who have the funds, who have the time, and they can stay at True North for one, two, three months, and they still can't do it at home, okay? So this is 
this it doesn't tell you anything about people's abilities. It tells you more about how strong the pleasure trap is, how strong the addictive nature of the pleasure trap is. And so the goal of this fasting escape is for people to come in and just get some momentum under their belt. You know, people can be struggling with eating healthy and just taking a week off or two weeks off or however long you need to, to just escape and then come back home with already five, six, seven days, 10 days under your belt of eating healthy and resting and relaxing can be just enough time to kind of turn, turn the ship around and start going in the right direction. And if you need to come back, you come back. You know what I mean? This is, this is something we were never designed to, to withstand is constant, constant uh, temptations in the modern world. And so I think we need more of these. We need these, we need these in the modern world. Wow. That's going to be incredible. So there are be questions if you will accept insurance at this center or sure. do you accept insurance for your chiropractic services? Uh, so I don't do insurance. I, I don't, I, I found, so with that, the, the lady that I told you about who had that concussion from the postal truck accident, uh, the, this was actually the case that stopped my insurance, uh, me dealing with insurance. For two years, the insurance company paid for her care. Uh, and they, you know, they paid for every care under the physical therapist, neurologists, even psychologists, uh, everything under the sun. And in, in about eight visits, she was hundred percent back to normal. And I remember they, they rejected the uh, insurance claim from my office. And I ended up calling the medical director and I said, what's the deal? You know, she, I've now discharged her. She agrees that she's back to normal. I agree. She's back to normal. Why won't you pay? And they looked and looked and looked and, and they gave me a bit of excuses and then I had to send it again. And after that, it was just, you know, I didn't want to play the game. So, you know, I do give people super bills so that their insurance can actually uh, reimburse them directly. But I don't do insurance in my in my practice. I just have a fee for service. Everybody pays the same amount. and I don't have to play any games with any companies. Uh, as far as the fasting escape, I don't think uh, insurance covers any type of fasting and I don't have medical doctors on staff yet. Um, and so until I do, then 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 we'll consider insurance, but it'll just be private pay for now. Uh, we'll do a super bill if we need, but it's probably not going to work. All right. Well, terrific. I, I look forward to the grand opening. Absolutely. It should be a lot of fun, and it's coming up this summer. So we're st I'm, well, st I'm looking for a look. So and uh, what parts of the pleasure that. trap do you personally struggle with, if any? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the entire book. No, the uh, so so if anybody's seen <laughs> if anybody's seen Dr. Lyle's uh, perfect personality, uh, he he goes over uh, what personality traits are vulnerabilities, and so I think I hit like three of them. <laughs> One of them is I'm very open to new experience. So uh, even when I was trying to eat healthy, I was constantly trying to eat new things and new things and new things and new things. So uh, I'm very lucky. I have a girlfriend right now and she makes the most amazing vegan treats and SOS for treats. She, she goes to your website, Chef AJ. She has your, your book and she has Kathy's book and she, she loves making these things. And so I, I'm just, I thank God that I have that available. Uh, but when I don't have that and I'm a little tired and I'm a little stressed, then, you know, I go to stuff that I'm not supposed to eat. Uh, the thing is I'm kind of extroverted. So uh, if I'm going to be hanging around people, it's, it's not that easy for me to kind of go against the grain. And if someone says, hey, do you want this? I probably have the word no. Uh, I'll probably say it once or twice. But if it happens any more than that, you know, I'm dead in the water. So uh, what I try to do the best is I try to eat a lot ahead of time and I try to hang around people who are not going to be forcing, you know, be very she about things. They kind of know my idea and they know that I'm not trying to display any conscientiousness here. I'm just kind of struggling. So I, I use a lot of self-deprecating humor uh, with people by telling them, hey, you know, I if I eat this today, I'm going to want it tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. So why don't I eat a little bit later tonight once I've built up a little willpower? By then, they've already forgotten. It's no big deal. So um, Dr. Lyle's strategies have really helped me. And the other thing is I, I'm not that agreeable, but I'm also not that disagreeable. So it's hard for me to just say no, you know. So it's, uh, it is it is a struggle. And also, um, I also get uh, I have food. I love to medicate when I'm sad. So that's, you know, I think I hit four of those or three of those. <laughs> of the personality. Probably the only thing that helps me is that I'm conscientious uh, and, and I'm conscientious enough where it's like, if I get on a good momentum kick, then I can, I can, I'm pretty good at sustaining that. So, uh, and so that, that's like, in, from my perspective and with my personality, the things that work best for me is to get on a good kick and get on a good momentum. And that's, that's where I can uh, thrive really, really well. So, so yeah, that's uh 
that thank God for for you, Chef Edge, and your your delicious treats and all the all the other people who do good things. There, it's, yeah. it's great. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. It's true, but you are. Don't forget, you're not only conscientious, you're highly intelligent. So those, those work in your favor too. So you know why it's so uh, important to do this. <laughs> but I agree. I do. I'll take, I yeah. Helpful when you're disagreeable. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot, like me, a lot like more me helpful. In the hand. So this has been great. Oh, yeah. Any final thoughts you'd like to share with our audience, Dr. Gershfeld? Or if anybody has a question for Dr. Gershfeld, please type it in now. You know, I, I really appreciate being on here. I've, I've watched a lot of these webinars from you, Dr. AJ, and I'm just thrilled to be here. Um, I love your audience. Great questions. Uh, great question for everybody. I always love hearing uh, questions about the podcast. I love hearing about, Dr., uh, about uh, questions that Dr. Lyle uh, navigates from you guys. It's really cool to see uh, people who are trying so hard to get healthy, and they just won't take no for an answer, and they, they want to find the best way to do it. Uh, that's something that's really inspiring because – I know that uh, I've had, you know, ups and downs in my life where I just think, oh, okay, well, let me just not focus on this right now. But it's really inspiring to hear that and see these people, you know, everybody in the audience that also are on the same journey. It's really a really pleasure to be on this journey together with everybody. Right. Well, people are thanking me so much for your time, and I love your story, and now I just want to meet Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put you in touch and see. I, I'm sure she'd be thrilled to come out and, and do, a, do a talk. Or, I mean, absolutely. Uh, do, do a absolutely. Talk, so. so, thank yeah. you guys so much for watching another episode of Healthy Living Live. I'm Chef AJ, and I make healthy, taste delicious. And thank you so much, Dr. Gershfeld. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Chef AJ. Have a great day. Bye, everyone.